This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we're going to be reviewing Elizabeth Arden's mythological creature from 1934, Bluegrass. Actually, let me show you also the box. It comes in today. This is the current formulation. This is what you get when you purchase it today if you can find it because it's being phased out in many countries, unfortunately. Want to go down a trip with me back to old 1934? Let's do it. Before we get our suitcases packed and into the time travel train, the Orient Time Express, uh, if you like my content and my channel but haven't yet, please consider subscribing today to my channel and push the join button next to the subscription button and become a member and gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Dacob all spelled together, uh, become a patron and gain access to extra perks there too. Amongst the many perks, special videos, uh, special previews, videos that are exclusive to Patreon and members, but also your name gets listed at the end of every video, scrolling in the credits tab as my co-producer of the Fashion Bunker. You're going to see that happening at the end of this video too. Thank you so much to my patrons and members who have already pledged. And thank you to my co-chatters who are chatting live with me right now here because this video is being filmed live in front of a virtual audience. So we're going to be reviewing this perfume together. Uh, oof, I'm so excited. I'm going to spray it right away. 1934, you guys. Oh, let's just let's just bathe in this. Look, look, look at look at that atomizer. Yes, yes, just overdo it. Why not? <laughs> it's pungent as a mofo, and let me tell you why. Aldehydes, 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 aldehydes. Bluegrass is off a rush of Chanel Number no. Five. Nineteen twenty-one was the release date of Chanel Number no. Five. Aldehydes were all the rage, and they still are here. But this is a particular interpretation of aldehydes because it kind of is also riding the wave of the fame and fortune of Shepras. But it is also, for the first time ever, a fragrance that mingles into the fougère area without fougère having been back then already a huge male-dominated perfume release type of format for fragrances. Oh my god, it's suffocating me. So the aldehydes here, when you first spray it out, it's like, it shoots you, it cuts through you, it, it squirts ink at you, um, acid, <laughs> everything. I mean, it's like, it's all over the place. But don't judge a book by its cover too quickly, because those aldehydes will dissipate. And as I said, again, very fascinating. What's the name's guy? What's the guy's name? George Fuchs, or George Fuchs, I guess? Well, George, well, I'll just call you George. George Fuchs is the nose behind this fragrance. Um, he did something very clever here. He did a fougère within a chipra with an aldehyde's base, all about lavender. But the lavender is not the crazy type of lavender that you would immediately sense. You have to understand what lavender is to smell it in here. And it's also very soapy. The aldehydes make it very soapy, but it also has that reminiscence of um, um, the, the, the Savon de Marcel, the Marcellese or the Mar Sapone di Marsiglia. It's a specific type of soap, which I might have, I don't know if I have it somewhere in the fashion bunker, but um, it's a white soap. But anyway, you know what, it, Google it, you know, as Madonna would say, look it up. But, uh, so, let me tell you, if you find vintage bottles of this, the liquid is going to be an orange, rusty, orange, dark, ambery color. So, yes, it, it went through reformulations. And, yes, a lot of people who've been wearing this for 50, 40 years are going to tell you this is tragic, what they're doing with it now. I'm going to tell you, as a novice of blue grass, I'm obsessed with the current formulation. It does not smell like anything out there from the mass release product today. Yes, it's watered down, it's toned down, but even in its toned down version, it still has a story to tell. It still has a punch to deliver. And let me tell you what the notes used to be. 
Uh, so aldehydes, lavender. Um, I got um, a lily of the valley. Uh, no, sorry, not a lily of the valley. Lily, a geranium, bergamot, neroli, orange blossom. Top notes. Middle notes. Again, lavender, spices, clove, carnation, uh, bay leaf, narcissus, jasmine, rose, and tuberose. Base notes: sandalwood, benzoin, vetiver, cedar, musk, and tonka bean. However, if you go now to the Elizabeth Arden website, the current listing uh, of ingredients that Elizabeth Arden gives us. Top notes, rose, jasmine, lily, lavender, geranium, orange blossom. That's it. Middle notes, vetiver, clove, and laurel, which wasn't listed before. And base notes, sandalwood, virginia, cedar, and musk. So we got benzoin is gone, vetiver is gone, tonka bean seems to be gone, the spices are gone, carnation seems to be gone, they're not listing tuberose, they're not listing aldehydes. So... The second that they didn't list aldehydes on the uh, Elizabeth Arden website, I thought, oh, wait a minute. They didn't list them because it's a too complicated of an ingredient for the normal consumer to understand. So we're just not going to write that it has aldehydes because people are going to be more worried about it in today's day and age rather than being intrigued by it. They're going to think, what's this chemical component in here? So I have the feeling that the Elizabeth Arden website toned down the list of ingredients on their website just to make it more simple even though this one has more ingredients than they list on their own website. Because, I mean, they're not listing aldehydes, but this thing is an aldehyde bomb, and I smell it right away. So it means that they're just not, they're just not telling us those main ingredients in there, which is fine. We, we have a nose. We can sniff them out on our own. Clove, carnation, lavender, aldehydes. Genius combination. What is so fascinating to me is um, that... Oh, there's so much to say about this perfume. This concept of the of the shipra but fougere instead of being shipra, but kind of playing in between genres. And and it's and you know what? I mean, you know, I don't like to genderize perfumes, and this one was targeted to to women back in the day. This is as unisex as it gets, because as I said, this was before Fougere became this huge male-dominated market. Uh and it's it's subtle. It's not flor. It's not so floral to make you think like, oh yeah, of course it's a '30s female fragrance. It's abstract enough to be conceptual. It has a body of its own that goes into almost uh, surrealistic territories for me, because it does begin on an aldehyde note. It does dry down to something very powdery. Uh, in between, it has these spikes of floral spiciness. It can get very spicy at times. It, it has that lavender mixed with tuberose. The clove comes out. And then it gets the sandalwood that kind of tames it, reins it back in. The lavender again elevates it a little bit. Lavender mixed with aldehydes is a very strange combination. Uh, lavender and aldehydes. In the opening, in the first blast of opening, it has something of Christian Dior's poison. I guess it's in the way the tuberose blends in with the aldehydes. Because this one doesn't have plum in it, you know. And it doesn't have a poponax, which is something that poison has a lot of. Um, but it has... Think about the beautiful midway to dry down of poison or the toilette from the 80s. That's what you have here in the opening notes. But this one goes through so many transformations, even in its current formulation, that it's just so divine to experience on your skin. For $10, that's how cheap this is. 100 ml Eau de Parfum for around about 10 bucks, 10 to $15. What more can you ask for? Honestly, I mean... Right now, it's it's so bizarre. Like here, it turned to... There's still aldehydes here, but usually on, on my kind of fist area, um, perfumes develop slower. They're, they're quicker here in the pulse area. So here, it's already a little bit further in its lifespan than it is here. So that's also something very fascinating, how to kind of to smell them out. It has that orange blossom as well, which gives it um, a body. It gives it like a nectar type of feel. But then we got 
you know, that clove, which is a dry smell, and we got the sandalwood, which also kind of dries stuff up. It, it, it gives, a, you know, so we have, it's a nectar feeling, but a dry feeling at the same time. And it fluctuates between the two. It's really gorgeous. It takes you on a journey. Now, it does become floral at a certain moment, and then it tips over into powders. And the powder is a very specific type of powder in here. It is 30s to a T. You might not even know because, I mean, for those of us who are alive today, I don't know if somebody's that old that they were already alive in the 30s. I don't think so. But hey, more power to you if you were. Uh, we might have been because we might be vampires, but that's a totally different story. Another can of worms to open uh, on another day. Uh, maybe. But if we do open that can of worms, then we're going to have to eat all of y'alls because you can't know the truth, right? Anyway, we digress. Um, this smells like the 30s. If you have a, a concept of the 30s through books that you've read, through black and white pictures that you've read, through colorized pictures that you've seen, 30s were also, it was also a time where I think uh, color pictures were also slowly coming in. Uh, there are some exceptional examples of colored photos. Well, that was more the 40s, perhaps. But if you have a concept of literature from that time, from the news from that time, this is before World War II. So we got, it's right before, 1934. I mean, this is like in between the two wars, we're in this kind of, you know, the golden 20s, the roaring 20s are over. We're in this time something is cooking there's a problem brewing in the world but it's not right there yet and this has that tension it has that relaxed feel but there's also tension in there as well and um you know elizabeth arden was famous for her you know she's kind of like the noblesse of of america and she's famous for her K kentucky horses so a horse is also a symbol of bluegrass uh, this is a very kind of 30s actually concept, that horse. Look how beautiful that they brought this design back. It, this bottle went through many, many stages and designs throughout its existence. It went through much more complex designs. It did look much more complicated in the past. Now it's simplified to a point where it looks like Aromatics Elixir in a way. Uh, I don't have the bottle here right now to compare them, but this one is a little bit more flattened and opened at the top than aromatic elixir and it is really cheap at the when you see when you lift it you got this really cheap sprayer nozzle there but what are you going to do for 10 bucks i don't really care i care about the liquid speaking of the liquid <laughs> blue grass really listen i look at it through the lights here i'm like backlit damn there's some stuff in here it's not just like a transparent liquid there's like little pebbles floating around there's even a hair <laughs> <laughs> you guys literally looks like they took like smell of the meadow and put it in here there's a, literally a human a hair floating around in this i cannot believe this yeah it's a hair hmm. i is this weird that i'm not disgusted by this i don't really care I mean, it is called bluegrass and there's a horse on it. So why shouldn't there be a hair in there? I mean, I'm not touching it. But who, you, the manufacturing plantation of this perfume. Yeah, guys, let me know if you get this perfume, if you also see little things floating in there. Maybe it makes it smell so special because it has a little bit of particles of whatever is uh, in there. Um, but, uh, oh, another thing. To, and, oh, you know, now it's getting a syrupy vibe. Now I'm getting almost like a minty, syrupy tone. I'm telling you, this thing is all over the place, but it's blended in so masterfully. Nothing screeches against each other. Everything kind of just like from time to time, this beautiful meadow of blue grass just opens up and from hiding in the meadow just pops up a certain ingredient and says, hello, and then goes down again into the grass and then the grass closes again. And that's how this perfume works. There's this beautiful breeze of wind just moving all the grass in that meadow and these kind of ingredients from time to time pop out to say hello to you, but they never yell at you. They never screech at you. They're just wonderful surprises. This one was made in, um, in America, by the way. So I don't know if there's differences, you know, if some ingredients are different, if this one is produced in Europe as well, because a lot of Elizabeth Arden perfume production has been moved to Spain. This one, however, is still produced in the States. 
I recommend you get it before they move this one to Spain as well, because who knows what they're going to do to it. You can see here. Uh, let me zoom it in, you guys. What is fascinating to note, however, it does say here that it's made in the USA, but it's a sticker. They added, they added this sticker at the bottom, which I wonder what's written underneath the sticker. If, if like the box says like made in Spain, but the sticker still states made in, I mean, they can't lie about this. Obviously, probably the box was pre-produced for whatever's going to come next, but they still had batches made in the US. So I have an American batch here. There is no oak moss listed or what have you. Uh, you can, you know, uh, when you rewatch the video, you can pause it and then you can check all the ingredients listed to compare to whatever batch you might purchase. Let me just tell you, my batch is OJA1. I checked this out. It was produced somewhere in 2020. So it's a relatively new batch, uh, somewhere late 2020, I believe. Oh my God. Okay, so the top is now still minty. And, and here, it's so complex. My gosh. It smells really expensive. I can imagine only how this thing smelled 30, 40 years ago. If now I love it the way it is, I mean, I'm fine with it being the way it is, but... And let me tell you something I, I tried out as well. This is amazing. Uh, if you have Au Noir by Christian Dior, which is lavender and licorice based, this one is also all about the lavender. I layered these two. If this one is a little bit less deep now because it's been reformulated and it's not anymore, you know, as a lot of people who know this since 30, 40 years say, I was like, okay, well, how do I give this one a little bit more depth? Well, let's give it this burnt licorice woods spicy lavender feel let's let's layer them holy cow it got the depth it got the depth these two together they 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 you listen they dance together they love each other they love each other to layered on top of each other they are so well educated <laughs> you have to be, it's like when they unite they have such a story to tell, so much depth, and they just keep telling you stories. It's amazing. But even on its own, it's amazing. But I'm just telling you, if you might think that uh, the current formulation is not what you remember from your vintages, add a little bit of Onoir to it, a little bit of the spiciness of Onoir to it. Uh, you're going to get depth. And this one already has it. But with Onoir on top of it, well, underneath it. First do Onoir, let it dry down a little bit, and then add this on top. 30 minutes later. Like, you're in nirvana. You're not gonna, you're, you're gonna just lay down on your bed, your sofa, whatever, with these two, and you're just gonna like, uh, you're, you're high, literally, literally, from the pleasure, the pleasure fumes. Now, let me, let me read a couple of things that I've collected um, in terms of notes. Uh, so they did define it as a fresh feminine floral bouquet with spicy woody undertones, an instant trip to the countryside, associated to strong memory of the past. This is how this 30 smelled to me. These are notes I wrote. So it has that accord of that Savon de Marcel. I also said rich, rich creaminess, powdery dry down, sharp opening, those aldehydes with lavender. Um, let me tell you how you can, s in general, say that a perfume... Is, is of a good quality. Uh, for me personally, in the dry down, when the dry down is still amazing, that's when you know it's good. The cheap, cheaply produced perfumes with really cheap ingredients, the dry down is a mess, or it's non-existent, or it's just a metallic mess. This one is not only really delicate, subtle, and beautiful in the dry down, but, and I love doing this, when the dry down hits in, it's a bit too early to do it, but I'm gonna do it anyway now, because it needs more time to hit the dry down. I warm up with my nostrils, you know, I ex I've i told you this in other videos of mine, but I'm going to repeat it here. I exhale hot air. Well, you can't exhale cold air. You're alive, obviously. Duh, Jacob. But you exhale air through your nostrils onto the spot where the perfume is sprayed, like this. And then you inhale immediately. You will be shocked. You can do this with every perfume. When the dry down hits and you do that, 
you're gonna with the you're gonna heat up those molecules that are left there. You're gonna burst them open, and they've already blended with your own hormones and your own uh, essential oils. They're gonna burst open and blend together, merge, and when you inhale that smell, heaven. That is like the last cry from the perfume. You know, it's its last breath of air is the most intoxicating one. When you warm them up, it's a little bit like tricking the system because they're supposed to spend more time to get there and little by little, by, but, but by warming them up in that moment with your own hot air, you manage to create, you condense a longer span of time in a shorter uh, concentration of time and you get that full-blown bouquet of the perfume and it's just amazing. This one, oh my gosh. <laughs> And now it's a bit too early to do it. So when I do it now, I pop the middle notes rather than the base notes. So the middle notes do give that syrupy, syrupy, minty feeling. But when it hits the dry down, dry down, it's just pure sandalwood goodness. Super sophisticated. So layered and textured. This feels like you're going on it's like you're living in an Agatha Christie novel. It's like you are living inside of an Agatha Christie novel. You're in the countryside, somewhere in England. This gives me more British vibes than American vibes. And actually, you're in Scotland with this one. And you're in the highlands. And there's that wind blowing and all those, you know, low growing grasses. They're just like moving in the wind. And in the highlands, you know, you have those little precipices and all those cliff formations. And you have that water right there next to you and you have all that wind constantly blowing and because the water is there there's this blue tint and blue hue that's cast onto everything uh so that's why the grass appears blue actually and the moss appears bluish with a blue tint and the sky isn't really blue because it's it always there's always that cloud formation happening there which gives it a filter like an nd filter in photography and it filters through more of the gray rays which fall onto the green grass and that gives it another blue hue as well and there's this constant fresh breeze of wind but you're wearing the most comfortable cashmere sweater and it's a simple type of cashmere sweater we're talking beige hues and brown hues knitted pattern colors with really thick buttons that are covered in leather to close the sweat, it's a thick sweater with a collar around it, and and you're just enjoying nature. It's a very simple landscape, and this is the beauty of of bluegrass. That landscape that we're painting, you know, we're walking down this towards this cliff, um, and we're gonna, we hear already the waves of the water in in the distance. But we're walking through the low grass that's kind of waving in the wind, and we have those that the gray sky, the gloomy, gloomy type of sky. But it's a very simple structured landscape. We got the grass and we got that horizon in front of us. And that's all there. There's no hills or nothing, or it's just plain, straight to the precipice. Walk. And it's such a simple landscape, but just like this perfume, it does hint at simplicity. But there's something hiding underneath because what is so complex is what we carry within. Your story, your luggage, and all of us, God knows, we all carry a lot of luggage with us. You're carrying that luggage with you. You're walking towards that precipice and you're thinking about your life. You're warm in that wonderful cardigan that you're wearing, that thick cardigan that's keeping you warm. And you're going through memories of, of your loved ones, of a love that that has left you, uh, and you are feeling alone, but you're looking at that horizon right in front of you, and it is so mesmerizing and beautiful. And even though it's gloomy, you do see hints of those cloud formations separating, dissipating slowly, and a shy sun shimmering through, very shyly, it's about to cast a couple of rays. It's going to hit through those clouds. It's going to find its, its way through those clouds to cast a ray or two onto the water in front of you. It's just about to happen. And you feel that it's going to happen. And all the sadness you're carrying with you is actually overcome by the hope and the anticipation 
of those couple of rays of light that are going to be so beautifully cast through those filtered clouds onto the water. And that glistening type of reflection, once that ray manages to cut through this cloud and hit the water and hit the waves of the water and reflects and refracts off the water and you get that kind of just for just for a nanosecond for a fragment of a second you get to see that glistening reflection and refraction as if a diamond was in the water then you feel bluegrass and you know it's an illusion and you know it's there just for a second and then it's gone but that's how the best parts of this perfume show themselves to you. They're like these little tiny reflections of light that pop out and then disappear immediately. And you're hopeful because you know they're going to come. And you enjoy this perfume for you. This is a type of fragrance you're not going to wear a lot out and about. This is the type of perfume you're going to wear at home when you're with yourself, when you really want to enjoy something that has been crafted, at this point we can say, generations ago not just decades ago, generations ago, so masterfully, with so much attention to detail, you're going to want to enjoy this for yourself because this one tells so much. It speaks volumes to you. And the best opportunity you have to enjoy this is while you're at home with yourself and you just let it unfold itself, peel layers off of layers and just give you those little hints because it whispers. When you least expect it, it's going to shimmer through. And so you need to be alone to really enjoy it because if you're out and about working job this and that sure you're also going to get those hints of it but it's you're not going to hear all it has to tell you if you're too busy with other things you should really dedicate a spa moment for yourself when you're enjoying bluegrass you're supposed to literally just abandon yourself to it because it bites at the opening don't get too shocked and scared of the aldehydes that come in at the beginning because they're going to go away. And then it's just going to become this... It's You're going to keep questioning yourself. It's going to become this cold but warm, sweet but savory, a little bit savory as well. <laughs> it's going to become powdery, dry, but also wet. It, it, it's, it's a little bit confusing, um, but in a delicate way. It's a delicate confusion. This perfume is a delicate confusion and it is much needed for me right now. And last vision is literally me standing at that cliff at the edge, looking into that distance water and seeing those two rays or three rays of sunlight beaming onto the water and just like sparkling those diamonds back at me. And the sun is about to set, perhaps even. And I know, like, okay, we're going to... This spectacle, we're going to experience it the next time the constellation fits, when the clouds are just right, when the time of day is just right. So this is a moment in time that is just now. And yes, I have my sadness and desperation in my luggage, carrying it with me. But damn it, life was worth it for that one moment to see that one little miracle happen. And to have it all framed with, with this perfume... You just say, yeah, that's why we live. That's why it's all worthwhile. Thank you guys for watching my review of Elizabeth Arden's Blue Grass. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me get to the chats. Uh, love the colors, says Robert. Uh, Mia says, even though you don't need a perfume after using Visible Difference because it's hella perfume. Debbie says, damn oversprayed goodness. I'm telling ya, you. Oh, it's amazing. Who, and, and it's also creamy. It has a, it smells of a cream, of a very, very 30s type of cream. Almost like a Nivea type of vibe going on there as well. Whoever sits next to you on the next fashion show would need to double up on those face masks to prevent aldehyde overdose. Oh, don't worry, darling. I've timed that. The taxi driver is going to have to double up on the masks because the aldehydes will dissipate by the time we're, we arrive with the taxi driver to the next location. Yes, 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 overspraying is the way to go, says Robert. Lord says, does he? <laughs> um, Fuchs, pardon my spelling, says Mr. Philip Fabulous, right? George Fuchs. Uh, why do I feel this one smells like Charlie Blue by Revlon, says Emilio. I don't know. Lord Chavez says, Clara by Revlon is a fantastic cheapie. 
Ciara, exactly. <laughs> Debbie says, yes, Revlon had some decent cheapies in the day for sure. Audrey says, Charlie Blue and Charlie Red, Emilio. Charlie Blue Balls, says Emilio. Mr. Philip Fabi says, haven't smelled this one, but in theory, that Tonka bean might be unnecessary. Lord says, yes, Debbie, Ciara reminds me of Karma by Lush. Is the name Bluegrass referring to the dying folk genre of music? You're the musician, Amelia, you might know. It's a the American genre. Bluegrass referring to the dying folk genre of music. Could be, but in my researches, I haven't found it related to this particular fragrance. But you might have a point there. I think it predates the term bluegrass for music. Not sure. Ah, Deb Debbie's also a music expert. So um, maybe bluegrass really comes from other reasons. Lavender and aldehydes. Sounds exciting, says Mr. Philip Fabulous. Debbie says, I know they still make the body powder for this one. Uh, they don't, actually. I can't find it anywhere. Uh, Emilia says, I love the all focus on the classic cheapies. Debbie says, me too, Amelia. <laughs> well, thank you, guys. I'm, I'm happy you're enjoying uh, my excursion into, uh, into the past. Oh, body powder to go along with your perfume. Love it. Can't get more vintage than that, says Mr. Philip Fabulous. Debbie says, I know that's true vintage. Yeah, I know the pot, you guys. Body powder with perfumes. That's where it's at. I don't like it when bottles get reformulated, but I understand it, says Rich Mitch. Debbie says, stuff like your uh, sunflowers, Emilio. <laughs> Child, not the mold floating around in the juice. I'm telling you, there's stuff in here. Oh, no, you know what? I actually, darn. I was so professional. I prepared an actual, I wanted to post on the Insta as I was going to review this. But you see, I was too excited that I totally forgot. I pre-prepared a post. I'm going to post it now. Anyway, this is so sad because I'm going to post it now to let everybody uh, know. I was going to let everybody know that I was about to review the perfume as it was going to happen, but I'm going to do it now posthumously. <laughs> and check out the photo I made for it, posting it right now, and it's posted. So go to my Instagram profile now and check the post. Check the photo I uh, I made. Um, this photo resembles to me how blue grass smells. I took this photo... Um, Mm, a couple of hours ago and um, let me know what you think about it it's like a lot of shadows and, and lights um, but that's kind of the 30s vibe I get. I didn't take a black and white picture I took a colored picture uh, but yeah I just posted it now so let me guys know I love this live stuff that we're, we're doing all of this live and <laughs> interaction i love the interactivity of it by the way guys if you're just tuning into this video now uh in the future every saturday i do a live stream so you know join the party join the fun and you know for the next live stream be sure to join the next live stream and you can also co-chat and co-review the perfume with me it's very interactive and i'm enjoying it a lot um for the sake of just because if you see this video maybe in five years who knows if the post is still going to be there. So for the sake of uh, just, you know, being transparent about it, for those of you who went to Instagram, already went to Instagram, but if you haven't gone to Instagram yet, this is the photo that I posted of, of my bottle of bluegrass, a photo that I took a couple of hours ago. There you have it. That's kind of the mood it gives me, that shadow. It casts a shadow. It casts something that you're dragging along with you. But it gives you hope. There's light in here, you know? I wanted to make that clear that there's like this ray of light going through this. It's just sparkling through. Anyway, um, so uh, that bitch's hair got to add some special zest to your bottle, right? That little hair flowing in there, I'm telling you. And there's like little tiny pebbles in there as well i mean not like little like dust particles or something i mean listen the more particles are in it the better it is for me and i don't have to touch it it's in the sprayer so but uh, it feels like there's almost something natural in there which you know probably not but anyway christy says well at least the hair is floating in the alcohol it's been sanitized no worries well said christy it's not a human hair it's a blue grass which is brew yes kira debbie says Bet you can get these in the USA on eBay for $6 or so. Go for it, Debbie. I'm telling you, you're not going to be disappointed. 
Mr. Philip Hammond says, it's probably that designer's dyed blue hair from that previous show you went to. Ha <laughs> ha, we got in the bottle is a mystery. Girl, we need to get ourselves a bottle. They're, they're cheapies, you guys. You can really get it. Rishmi says, I'd love for you to review Zmalto pour homme. Sure, Rich, send over the perfume and I'll review it. <laughs> yup, and the powder. Debbie is going to cheapy for some for sure. <laughs> Um, oh, hold on, guys. My chat just scrolled away from me. Mm. I bought a Dior Homme Tester bottle 2013, and it has particles floating in it. Oh, my God, Robert, that's a great year. Good for you. It, don't worry about the particles. Jack says, I love your description of Scotland. Oh, thank you, Jack. You know, Scotland is in my heart forever. I love Scotland so much. Debbie says, this one has really caught your imagination, Jacob. Love it. Richmond says to Audrey Jane, he would love Zmalto pour homme. <laughs> I might, but I haven't tried yet. Mr. Philip Evans says, ah, oh, those Jacob descriptions, poetry, painting that romantic uh, paisage sublime. Thank you so much, Mr. Philip Fabulous. Robert says, Jacob is more poet than Bobby Womack himself. Oh my God, listen to him. Pop culture references, Robert, yes. Bluegrass, confuse yourself. I am Confucian, blue. Grass, blue glass, Elizabeth Arden, child. Uh, uh, Schoenheit something. Uh, what would you? What would be your suggestions for a scent with grape-focused notes? Thanks. That's for another video. We're, we're talking about blue grass now. What do you think of white tea? Oh, that's another for another video. Kira says, every time Deco reviews a perfume, I close my eyes and enjoy the journey so much. Thank you so much, Kira. Letty says, I keep thinking of the movie Public Enemies and imagine that Billy John Dillinger's love was wearing this perfume. It was 1934, after all. Oh, that's amazing. Some people say that the current a version of Poison by Dior smells like grape juice. Not to me, though. No, it's plum. Robert says, current formulation. Those horse kind of looks like a... The horse kind of looks like a top here. Oh, no, it doesn't. It just has a bent head. It does by its snout. Oh, cha, you guys. Um, you guys. We're done. We're done with the comments. Uh, no, Debbie. No, no, no. Uh, it's not 1936. 1936 is listed on the website that is not good with information. It's 1934. You got to check out the good, uh, the good, the actual date of release of the perfume. It's 1934. Exactly, Debbie. 1934 on some sites. On the ones that are correct. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you've, you've enjoyed this review. You, I hope you've enjoyed this landscape that we went on. I hope you've enjoyed the bluegrass journey. Damn, is this one worth every penny. And it literally costs pennies. <laughs> uh, anyway... Thank you so much for uh, watching. You can, um, if you wish, if you like my content, uh, consider subscribing to my channel today and push the join button next to the subscription button and become a member and get uh, access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Deco all spelled together on Patreon to get access to extra perks and special videos, uh, exclusive videos as well as this gorgeous rolling red carpet moment at the end of every video and become one of the names listed here as the, as the official supporter and co-producer of the Fashion Bunker. Once you join or become a patron, your name is here as well. Thank you guys to all of you who have already pledged and become patrons and members. I love you so much. You really make the Fashion Bunker a reality. And actually, from the funds of this particular, just an example, this bottle was purchased. I know it's not an expensive bottle, but you made this happen, you guys. This whole review happened thanks to your support of the Fashion Bunker. So it really means a lot to me. And I get also to give back all the love back to you because I get access to these special wonderful keys to travel through past through time and just experience these wonderful things with you together thank you from the bottom of my heart for that what can i tell you perfumes are the love of my life i i can I, i'm never i can never tire enough to repeat this to you you know i don't even think perfumes should be luxury items i do not think that they should be taxed as luxury i think they should be prescribed by doctors and given to you for free because they enhance your life they make you feel much more happy or they can even enhance your sadness. Why not? If you're in the mood for that, you could go for that as well. They frame mindsets and emotions in such a way that you just, you soar when you're wearing a perfume. And, but don't forget, 
wear it for yourself, not for others. A perfume is something intimate. It's something for you to enjoy and to feel yourself. And when you feel yourself the right way, then everybody else will just follow because that's always how it is in life. I can tell you from my personal experience, when I'm feeling my oats and I'm so happy with myself and I am in my zone, I attract other people like flies. They all want a piece of that cake. But when I am not in the zone and I don't feel comfortable and I feel insecure, I repel people. Nobody wants a piece of that cake. <laughs> so it's all about the right balance. And perfumes really, really help me out to balance. Thank you guys so much. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. See you soon. Bye.